Hey, what's going on everybody? Another episode and today I'm switching it up a little bit. Uh, this is a video I wanted to do for a while and um, me doing this video is helping me stay organized and uh, creating a video log, a record of something that I put together and studied as well as I do want to help um, others and uh, that's why I do a lot of my videos is to uh, document something that I experience and um, have a record of it so if it's an interview that you're going to be doing um, or if it's a task a, a, a do-it-yourself um, project that you have going on and also uh, my journey that I am experiencing uh, throughout my life and um, I wanted to uh, do a video on the interview that I did with Amtrak for a passenger conductor trainee and the type of interview uh, method that uh, the company used is the STAR. So the STAR interview method is uh, the situation, task, action, and result. Now, using uh, this interview method, uh, it helps you provide clear and concise answers. So you need to be specific. Do not get caught up in the details and uh, being prepared for what is going uh, to be asked of you in the interview so you can uh, score high if they're grading you and then they're going to compare you against other candidates based on the uh, scores that you receive from the interviewers. So I remember when I interviewed with Amtrak last April, um, they said, hey, you know, you're being selected for an interview. I was like, okay, great. And, it, and the email stated that uh, they're gonna be using the STAR method. So I researched a bunch of videos on YouTube, but like, as I stated by me, uh, applying to Amtrak and going through the Amtrak interview, I wanted to put together uh, just some of my ideas and thoughts on um, how the next person can best prepare for the interview and questions that would be more tailored to uh, the industry and field working for the railroad. So uh, first, I want to start off by possible questions that you may be asked. So preparing for the interview, um, questions may go like this. Okay, let's get started. So tell us about yourself, work experience, education, and how it relates to this role. So that's kind of like a general question being thrown out there. So you just tell the interviewers about yourself, um, your work experience, your education, and tie it all together to the role that you're applying to. Next, how long uh, were you with your last company and why did you or are you leaving? So just articulate how long you were with your last company and if you're still there or why are you leaving, why you wanna to come to Amtrak, okay? Tell us about a safety procedure you had to follow and the equipment you used to do it. So this is just uh, very general. For example, in my last job um, as a lead operator, we had to pull asphalt samples uh, every Tuesday. So every Tuesday um, at a certain time, by the time change, it doesn't matter. But every Tuesday, uh, I had to pull an asphalt sample from the asphalt tanks. So, for example, I would have the paperwork, the orders stating what samples to pull, and I would have on my PPE, my uh, uh, personal protective equipment. So I would have on my helmet with a face visor, my safety glasses. Um, if I'm gonna be anywhere where there's a lot of noise, uh, my hearing protection, my earplugs, um, and then I'm gonna have on my uh, FRC uh, apron. So if I open the valve and asphalt shoot out, it's not gonna burn me. So 
just try to put together a safety procedure you had to follow and equipment you used to do it. Because for example, with Amtrak uh, flagging a station, when we depart, I have to have on my safety glasses. I have to have on my Amtrak uniform, my, my hat, um, possible earplugs if we're close by another locomotive or blowing a road crossing. So just try to formulate um, the information to, to possible questions you may be asked such as this. Okay, so do you have any objections to this type of work? So you're applying to be a passenger conductor. So if you're afraid to conduct or direct or speak in public, or if you're afraid to work around large crowds, then probably not going to be a good fit for you. So just that's why I just make sure you read the job description and you make sure that the position that you're applying to is a good fit for you. You may be asked to work in harsh weather conditions. Are you okay with that? So working for the railroad uh, in the field, being a conductor, you're going to work in the sun. You're going to work in the rain. You're going to work in the hot. You're going to work in the cold. So if you have any objections to working in the elements, this position, uh, this field may not be a good fit for you. Do you have any restrictions of days that you can work? Now, uh, trains work on an on-call basis unless you have enough seniority to hold down a regular job. But starting out, you're going to be working on call. So uh, this position is not a position where you can say, hey, you know, I, I only have availability from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. on uh, Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, I can't work Sunday night. Like, you have to have 100% availability. So this includes days, nights, weekends, and holidays. It does not matter. You have to have 100% availability and from what I gather the general questions that they're asking you if you have an answer to a question they ask and it doesn't fit or align with uh, the work patterns of a passenger conductor you're probably not going to get selected okay what do you consider an acceptable reason to mark off miss work call out or lay off all different terms, it all means the same thing. It means calling in and not going to work. So an acceptable reason to mark off, just give a good answer, what you feel is acceptable to mark off. But I, I know I would not say, hey, because we have uh, the family cookout or hey, because the Florida Georgia game is coming on this week and we're going to be uh, tailgating. I probably wouldn't give those answers. Uh, I would give an answer, you know, in a dire family emergency. I mean, because uh, life happens. Emergencies happen. That's why you do have um, time where you can take off. Or in a dire emergency, that's when you would call out. But you just wouldn't call out because um, the Black Friday sale. I, I would not say anything along those lines. Okay, tell us about a time you were told either negative or positive feedback and how did you handle it and what was the result? So as I stated, you're using the STAR uh, interview method. So you take in the situation, the task, the action, and the result. So just formulate an answer uh, to answer all of the uh, questions that was asked. And, and as you can see, there was kind of like a two-part uh, question. Describe a time you could not complete a task because you had insufficient time or communication. Next, describe a situation you had to uh, persuade an employee to do something. Uh, so in this uh, industry, you're going to be working uh, with others. So on, a, on the uh, train, you're going to have the conductor, the assistant conductor, and then you're going to have OBS, which is onboard services. And you have your train attendants, you have your uh, lead service attendants, and you have uh, your chef. So you're going to be working with a great deal of uh, employees. 
So if you have an employee um, that needs uh, persuasion on doing something, you have to have that uh, that skill <clears throat> to kind of uh, persuade your uh, co-workers uh, to do the task at hand or to do what's right. So just try to figure out a good answer to that question. Okay. Uh, describe a time where you helped a customer meet uh, their needs. So in this example, I can say uh, even while I'm qualifying, I, there was a passenger, which is a customer a passenger that came up and was sitting in coach. And for whatever reason, they don't want to sit in coach anymore, whether it's their first time on a train and they're experiencing sitting beside a passenger and that's not what they want to do. Or they may just want to uh, go back in a sleeper car and just have a little bit more privacy, have a little bit more space to stretch out, relax, unwind. So they ask, hey, are any sleeper cars available? So in, in that case, I would work with the train attendants to see if there, there are any uh, sleepers available. And we would uh, go through the proper channels uh, to have the passenger pay, pay the difference. And then we'll uh, quarterback getting the passenger to the, uh, the sleeper car. So that's an example where I helped the customer meet their needs. They wanted to go from coach uh, to the sleeper cars. Boom, there you go. Describe a time where you had to deliver bad news to a coworker or a customer. So just think about uh, a time when we thought we were getting off early, or a time when we thought we were going one route and we are going another route, or a time where uh, something happens in the workplace and you have to uh, break the news uh, to the coworker or the passenger or a customer. So just keep your mind open and uh, just be prepared to answer the questions that they're gonna be asking you, okay? Have you ever worked in a position uh, where you had to keep up with certifications and uh, how did you keep up with them? So being a conductor, you have to be uh, certified. You're gonna be a certified conductor and you have to uh, complete a physical every so often. You have to uh, take training ever so often and you have to uh, make sure you pass all tests that are given to you. So you see how you're keeping up with your certification. So if you're at a previous job, for example, my previous job, I had to be a Fort Lift certified. I had to be a Aerial Lift certified. And I had to um, take what we call them uh, CBTs, computer based training. And that's where I was talking about uh, CPR, uh, AED or Haz Whopper, we will go through um, how to handle hazardous materials, uh, how to store hazardous materials. So that's an example where I'm articulating how I kept up with uh, certifications. So a, a good question that may be asked, have you ever experienced an, an accident within the workplace and how did you handle it? Uh, accidents happen, no one is perfect. So just think of a good example where an accident happened um, and what was the result and what are you gonna do uh, to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Um, next, tell us a time you experienced a coworker bending or breaking a rule and how did you handle it? So just think of an example where you saw a, a coworker doing something that you know is not right or is out of procedure, and what did you do about it? Did you approach the coworker? Did you remind them like, hey, you know, uh, we I, I don't wanna see you uh, uh, mess up. I don't wanna see anything happen because I know ABC, you know, this is the correct way and even give a lending, a lending hand. You know, I help you complete the task or um, if you don't know where to get the proper PPE from to complete the task, uh, let me show you, or just, just being proactive and uh, uh, making sure that you're helping avoid a, a workplace incident. Okay, tell me about a time you had to deal with the turf situation. So 
I remember in the interview, it was like a lot of the questions were kind of the same, but they were different uh, to a certain extent. So um, even the last question, tell me about a time you experienced a coworker bending or breaking a rule and how did you handle it? But then you see the next question, tell me about a time you had to deal with a tough situation. So in my opinion, that could have been a tough situation because some people uh, may be um, more eager or may not have a problem with approaching other people, especially when you see them doing something wrong. That could be a tough situation, but you just got to you got to prepare for the interview. So you just got to think about all possible questions and you just have to think of a lot of different examples uh, to give to the interview so you can score high. So, uh, as I stated, I interviewed with the company, and in my opinion, these were, were some general questions that were asked because I know I took about a solid week just reviewing questions and, and watching uh, various videos, and in my opinion, for uh, the job duties, your responsibilities, these questions that I found are strongly aligned to what you may possibly be uh, faced with in the interview. Now, if you are interviewing, please do not just go over the questions that I uh, went over. This is just a general example to kind of guide you in the right direction with what you may possibly be asked in the interview. Also, uh, <clears throat> some things that I, I put together were strong, uh, positive statements uh, that I feel is uh, highly aligned with being a passenger conductor and working uh, with Amtrak. And honestly, any railroad, because uh, being in the field as a conductor or engineer, it's a safety sensitive position. So safety is very important. It's paramount. So strong statements. So these are just some good statements just to have on the top of your head to be able to uh, articulate when you're talking, when you're uh, uh, interacting with the interviewer. So safety plays a major role with Amtrak because of all the lives you deal with. So with uh, a passenger conductor, uh, you have passengers, you have human life on the train. That's very important. Being a conductor is an amazing career with a lot of responsibility. And at the end of the day, you feel fulfilled with the job you have done. Yes. So when you show up, you get your train bulletins, you get your your manifests, uh, you make sure you have all the correct bulletins, you make sure you have all of your PPE, uh, you make sure you have all the supplies that you need, you make sure that any uh, instructions that you are to follow, you follow. When you uh, go from point A to point B and you uh, successfully get done with your shift, there's a sense of accomplishment there. And this is a rewarding feeling. So as I stated, the position is self-rewarding and a huge career accomplishment. To me, being a conductor is an awesome position and I love it. So what excites me most about this position is having the opportunity to showcase my skills of being organized and my strong belief of paying attention to detail. So if you are someone who loves being organized, uh, love gathering information and following it correctly, um, love uh, looking at the different variables and making sure you're following proce procedures correctly, this is going to be a, a perfect opportunity for you. So another strong statement. I consider myself a strong leader, which is one of the reasons why I reached the position of lead operator with my previous company. Also, I obtained my master's of business administration, my MBA. The program is centered around leadership and customer service. I love learning new procedures and being a part of something bigger than myself. As I stated, you're working on a train with other coworkers. You're a team. It's not one person. There's no I in team. You're working together as a crew 
uh, to accomplish the goal of getting from point A to point B uh, safely as well as on time. So this, for me personally, this is one of the things that I absolutely love. I love that I'm not in an office. I do not want to work in an office. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I, I, I experienced it. It's not for me. I love that I am not in an office. The position is 100% travel. My office is trains. I love trains. I'm a huge rail fan. Um, I have a strong passion for railroads, railroad history, watching trains, learning about trains, listening to trains. Um, I worked for CSX for almost uh, eight years. I left CSX. I was gone for five years. I missed it severely. I wanted to get back into the railroad industry um, and uh, thankfully I did. And as I stated, reading the job description and even when I was uh, selected for the interview, it says in, in bold text, this position is 100% travel. You will be working on board trains 100% of the time. That's what I love. That's what I want to do. So I feel like those are some strong statements to help you prepare for an interview that you would possibly have uh, with Amtrak for a passenger conductor, as well as questions that you may be asked. And um, the method that was used was the STAR method, which is uh, they give you a situation, task, what is your actions, the actions uh, taken, and the result of you taking those actions. So I hope uh, this video helped someone. If it helped you, if you gain or learn anything from this video, please drop a comment uh, below. Also, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe to the channel as I am uh, trying very hard to grow my channel and uh, share it, like it, and uh, I appreciate your time. And until next time.